Hey everyone, so I'm going to try to get into the habit of releasing some shorter episodes in between the longer form ones that make up the main show. But I know my release schedule has been so off lately, for a while now, that who even knows what constitutes the main show anymore. Anyway, uh, I'm not a regular viewer of Piers Morgan Uncensored. His usual topics, the tabloid kind of stuff and the monarchy, don't really interest me. But I have fallen into the habit of watching him when he covers Gaza or the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And he recently had Gad Sad on. I hope that's how it's pronounced. I'm familiar with Gad Sad. I'm just not sure about the pronunciation. But he's a Canadian professor who specializes in evolutionary psychology. He comes from a Lebanese Jewish family, and he's very staunchly pro-Israel. Me personally, I'm not Jewish, I'm not Palestinian, I don't have a lot of skin in the game, so to speak, other than just being a human being who doesn't want to see other human beings die, especially innocent civilians, which I imagine, or at least hope, is a sentiment most of us share. And on October 7th, my heart was with Israel. I was sickened and outraged by the news that hundreds of young people had been massacred at a music event by the harrowing images of people being abducted from said event, by the images of Shani Luke's stripped body being paraded through the streets of Gaza in the back of a pickup truck, and by the horrific stories coming out of the kibbutzim. But then I also became sickened and outraged by the massive rising death toll in Gaza, the scale of the destruction being wrought, and the mass displacement of over a million people. But I would hope that, no matter what side of the argument a person's on, we could all still agree that it's at least good to be truthful and intellectually honest, which is why I found it so disturbing that people on social media seem to rush to misquote or misrepresent director Jonathan Glazer's recent Oscar acceptance speech. If you're not familiar, Jonathan Glazer directed the foreign language film The Zone of Interest. It's in German, and it's about a Nazi officer and his family who lived next to the Auschwitz concentration camp during the Holocaust. It explores themes like the banality of evil, desensitization, and dehumanization. It won the Academy Award for Best International Feature Film, and I think it actually won multiple awards. But Jonathan Glazer's acceptance speech definitely made waves. There were people like myself who found it very commendable and moving, and then there were some hardcore pro-Israel types who denounced it and even accused Glazer of being anti-Semitic, which is nonsensical for a couple of reasons. One, he himself is Jewish and had made the speech while standing on stage, receiving an award for a film he had made about the Holocaust. And Secondly, in his speech, which I'll read, he denounces not just what's happening in Gaza, but also the October 7th attacks committed by Hamas. So I'll read from his statement or speech now so you can hear for yourselves exactly what he said, and Piers Morgan will also play a clip of the speech in part, but for some reason he cuts off the end. But here we go. Thank you to the Academy for this honor and to our partners A24, Film4, Access, and the Polish Film Institute, to the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum for their trust and guidance, to my producers, actors, collaborators. All our choices were made to reflect and confront us in the present. Not to say look at what they did then, rather look what we do now. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. It shaped all our past and present. Right now we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness in the Holocaust, being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people, whether the victims of the October, and then there's an applause interruption, and he continues, whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel, or the ongoing attack on Gaza, all the victims of this dehumanization, how do we resist? So there it is, and I remember thinking to myself that it probably could have been worded more strategically 
to help preemptively shield himself from potential detractors because that one sentence begins, right now we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness. So if you stop there and take it out of context, which many did, I imagine in many cases knowingly and dishonestly, it sounds pretty bad, sounds like he's refuting his Jewishness. But if you read the sentence in its entirety, which is kind of how sentences are supposed to be read, I believe, it, it reads, right now we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness in the Holocaust, being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. Big difference. Sounds like he's saying that he resents as a Jewish man having his Jewishness used as an excuse or justification to oppress or do harm to others. Like I said, it probably could have been worded more strategically. He could have said, we resent that our Jewishness and the Holocaust are being hijacked. I think if worded that way, it wouldn't have left that opening for the hyenas to rush in and try to take him out. But I'll play the first Piers Morgan clip now. Okay, let's start with this. I want to start with Jonathan Glazer. So this was a moment at the Oscars, probably the only political moment, actually, that happened all night. So you've got this guy, he's an Oscar-winning director, and in his acceptance speech, he says this. All our choices were made to reflect and confront us in the present, not to say, look what they did then, rather, look what we do now. Our film shows where dehumanisation leads at its worst. It shaped all of our past and present. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. Whether the victims of October the... So it's interesting. There was an outbreak of applause, but not by everyone, by any means. And there's now been an open letter response. I think over a 1,000 people have now signed this. And it says, we are Jewish creatives, executives and Hollywood professionals. We refute our Jewishness being hijacked for the purpose of drawing a moral equivalence between a Nazi regime that sought to exterminate a race of people and an Israeli nation that seeks to avert its own extermination. So you've got a lot of backlash there to what Jonathan Glazer said. First of all, your, your reaction to that speech he made. So as I was saying, Piers, or the person running the clip, stops it before Glazer mentions the victims of October 7th. I guess the charitable route would be to assume the omission wasn't intentional, but who knows? He may have chosen in fairness to stop it there because of the applause break. But now Gad Sad will respond, but he prefaces what he's going to say with a couple of examples that I almost didn't include because I felt like they were a waste of time, but for the sake of context, not that I think they offer much, I'll leave them in. And with the first anecdote, I think he might be trying to imply that Jonathan Glazer's a self-hating Jew. Kind of sounds that way, but here we go. So let me contextualize it by giving a few similar uh, situations that have taken place. Uh, several years ago, a doctoral student at Hebrew University, a Jewish doctoral student, uh, by name of Tal Nitzan, was trying to demonstrate through her research that the IDF engages in rampant rape of Palestinian women. She did the research, and to her, to her dismay, she found out that there wasn't a single documented case of an IDF soldier raping a Palestinian woman. You know what she concluded, Pierce? She concluded that the IDF soldiers are so grotesque in their dehumanization that they're not even willing to rape a Palestinian woman. woman. So if they had raped the women, they're evil. And if they don't rape any women, they're evil. They're evil. That's what parasitic self-loathing is. Here's one more example. Uh, there's a gentleman uh, in Norway that had been raped by a Somali immigrant in 2011, a, a man who had been sodomized by a Somali immigrant. When that Somali immigrant was going to be deported, the Norwegian man felt very, very guilty that he would now have a bad life in, in Somalia. So this is what Jonathan Glazer is doing. He's basically saying, please believe me that I am a virtuous, progressive person. And in doing so, I'm rejecting my Jewish identity. You could be empathetic towards the innocent killing of any people without rejecting your identity. He's grotesque. You can see right there, or here right there, he accuses Jonathan Glazer of rejecting his Jewish identity, even though right in the clip Pierre has played a moment before that, he says once again, 
that here they reject or refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked, not that they reject or refute their Jewishness itself. And I imagine Gad smart enough to know better. He's active on social media, including Twitter or X, I believe. So he's probably aware of the way Jonathan Glazer's acceptance speech has been selectively edited to make it seem like he's rejecting his Jewishness. And yet he continues to repeat this defamatory lie on Piers Morgan's show anyway, even going as far as calling Glazer grotesque. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing with the man politically, but don't twist his words. Be honest. I mean, his movie was about the Holocaust. He says he's been misrepresented as to what he was saying. And I guess the overview in defense of him is, have we now reached a point where you can't, as a Jewish person, criticize Israel and its government and its actions in response to October the 7th without effectively looking like you're being disloyal to Jewish people? No, I, I think it's perfectly fair to criticize endless uh, Israeli policies. That's what makes it a vibrant democracy. But to say that I reject my Jewishness, uh, listen, the people who wanted to kill us when, when I grew up in Lebanon wouldn't have cared about beheading me whether I rejected my Jewishness or not, right? If he had been at that music festival and said, hey, guys, Hamas, don't don't kill me. I reject my Jewishness. They wouldn't have listened and been sympathetic to him. So you could both chew gum and walk at the same time. You mm -hmm. could criticize Israeli policies all you want without comparing what's happening now in Israel and Gaza to the Holocaust, which is an offensive comparison, or in rejecting your own identity, which you should be proud of. So I have to give credit where credit's due. Piers Morgan was sounding refreshingly fair and reasonable there, paraphrasing, but making the point that can't you be Jewish and also be critical of Israeli policies without being accused of being disloyal to quote unquote your people? or your Jewishness, and he even brings up Jonathan Glazer complaining that he's been misrepresented, as he obviously has, and yet Gad Sad doubles down anyway and still characterizes him as rejecting his Jewishness when that isn't what the man said. He said he refutes his Jewishness in the Holocaust being hijacked to excuse actions he doesn't agree with ethically. Let's listen to Jonathan Glazer again without the ending being clipped, and I'll probably leave it there. All our choices were made to reflect and confront us in the present, not to say, look what they did then, rather look what we do now. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. It shaped all of our past and present. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. Whether the victims of October the... Whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel or the ongoing attack on Gaza, all the victims of this dehumanization, how do we resist 